thanks everyone for for joining. It's really a pleasure to have both of you here. Yeah, thanks um, for having us. You know, in particular, because as as Dom just painted a very kind of cool and futuristic picture of of what AI is going to do, um, there are many different applications for AI, in particular at the intersection of AI and crypto. Right. So I would want to take the following twenty minutes to get your unfiltered view yeah. on what do you think about uh, some of the developments. What are you most excited about? But before we before we start, maybe a quick intro from both of you, Melody, if you want to start. Sure. Hi, uh, I'm Melody. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, uh, Spartan Group. Um, we uh, I have a background in um, in, in Wall Street, um, uh, but I um, um, got trapped. Well, got drawn into technology space through some of the IPOs I did in the back in uh, um, the mobile stage, uh, and then um, we started. Spartan to specifically only focus on crypto investment because we saw the potential of crypto disrupting traditional finance. And coming out from that background, uh, we're really seeing that today. The liquidity, the size, and, and the technology is really catching up with um, with ChatFi. So yeah, and super excited to be here today. I think AI and crypto is like the perfect marriage, and we'll go into talk about that soon. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Logan. Um, I've been a dev by trade my whole life. Um, I came to know about the Eliza OS framework uh, when I was looking to uh, build a persona into an inheritance protocol. Um, I was working on this with my family office and trying to figure out how to not uh, just let the money uh, last forever, but the, the person themselves. Uh, Eliza OS is a very malleable framework. I'm sure you've heard of AI16Z at this point. And being a partner there. Even Logan just oh, go ahead. like, sign of hands, who knows AI? Who knows? Is he? Who's, who's heard of this? Okay. People in the room. So, uh, well, yeah, so a, a pretty uh, exciting platform, DAOs.fun, um, launched um, this, this DAO. Uh, AI16Z is a parody, uh, which backed the Eliza OS uh, framework. This is an open source framework that's being used by tens of thousands of developer projects all around the world and um, is one of the fastest growing GitHub projects ever. Um, so my background is a dev, uh, I've worked in government and uh, transparency for the last 15 years, building blockchain technologies. Cool, great. I mean, amazing to have you here. So maybe let's start with, a, with an easy opener, right? And I think this is also interesting for all of you. It's like, what is the single most exciting AI crypto intersection that you're really excited about? Um, yeah, um, I think, well, the timeline is actually um, I remember three years ago, I went to ETH Denver. Uh, that's when um, I think OpenAI just um, kind of changed everybody's view of what AI can do. I think from a crypto background, the, I really started to panic. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing is so centralized. Everybody, there's a massive discrepancy in terms of who can have AI and have the capability and who cannot. Um, but everybody in crypto dismisses it. They're like, AI is super centralized, all the training, all the compute, has nothing to do with crypto, it doesn't intersect at all. So, and I asked a lot of AI people, they're like, no, we don't want to touch crypto. So there was um, a big disconnect three years ago, um, and we've seen so many things have changed. I think initially, at different stage, the, the beauty about crypto is things move so fast, right? Initially, when we looked at it, I was excited about decentralized infrastructure. Um, that was, we talk about decentralized compute, decentralized training, decentralized inference, different decentralized, well, like cross-sourcing model. Um, so we looked at all of that. I think it's very interesting. Um, until, for me, the aha moment is actually about maybe six months ago. I was like, how do I even think about AI investment, right? And then as soon as I was like, if I'm AI, what do I want to own? Right. If I'm AI, I'm sentient uh, intelligence. How? What kind of infrastructure do I need so I will survive on my own without humans inter interference ever? Well, they cannot pl pull the plug on me. That's the moment I was like, oh, like I want to look for everything up and down the stack. How we can support AI? And that's really. Um, when I hear about what ICP is building, I, I got super excited. Um, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Being able to outlive us, you know, uh, some of these AIs are actually more wealthy than 99% of the population on this planet. And, uh, you know, there's some that are coming out even to, uh, within the last weeks where they're going to be investing in DAOs. Um, there is a parody of, a, of Klaus Schwab that was uh, made to invest in further DAOs. And having them have, um, as you said, decentralized compute, 
being able to pay for their own compute. The Eliza framework actually has these AIs having their own wallets all across, across chain, ICP included, and uh, being able to pay for the services on a decentralized cloud. We, we're not going to last forever, but they can. And that's the most exciting cross is just furthering this evolution of who we are through this technology. It's also quite scary. Yo. I think it's very scary. I think <laughs> I'm really excited at the same time, very scared. Um, what can be created and what can outlast us. And... Yeah, no, that actually, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe just a follow up to, because you mentioned like you were excited about seeing what ICP is bearing, like what mm. was it exactly? Well, I, I, I didn't actually know that much about ICP. Um, and I thought it's just another blockchain um, because, you know, all the blockchains are similarly structured, right? They do similar things. They are really a ledger to keep track of where things are. Um, and until, like, I, you know, because I've been thinking about this AI thing for a long time, like what kind of uh, infrastructure or technology stack do we need to build for AI, for AI to really have that power to, to function on their own? Um, and then I realized, oh, that's the, that's the cloud. If you can put the entire con model on chain or in a decentralized uh, and um, um, permissionless cloud, um, you can unlock the ultimate uh, resource that AI really needs, which is compute, right? Mm -hmm. And all the rest are the infrastructure plugs you need to build, right? How to do payment, um, how do they transact with each other, um, how do they get data, uh, but ultimately is compute. and. Having a really large developer ecosystem where there's resources, there's documentation that works out of the box um, for as a dev, um, you know, you want kind of the, you know, the path to least resistance. So when you're either an entrepreneur as a dev and you're setting out to do an AI or you're, the, you know, a uh, engineer at a firm that's doing this, you really just want things to work. And that's ICP. Um, we've uh, integrated a ICP plugin into Eliza OS. Uh, was great to work with developers. Um, always available, always resourceful. So that's that's my strong point when it comes to working with any blockchain around the world. Yeah. Um, is other people to talk to at any moment you have an issue. Great. I mean, it's great to hear. And a shout out to the R and D team for putting all of this hard work to making the magic happen. Let's let's switch to another topic that I think is probably on top of everyone's mind, in particular, you know, when you cross the intersection of investment and AI. So. 370 is the number of AI associated projects on coin market cap. 370. I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, I actually just checked it. So right. uh, I thought it was 200, but actually I'm surprised it's so low. It's, it's, you thought it was more? Oh yeah. I mean, with the, and is that a certain market cap or it's people that have gotten listed on CNC? It's what at least coin market cap allows to be listed with the right. AI tech. Yeah. Right? So they do probably, have a nice review process, they do yeah. diligence. So probably there's a, a gray market that's probably a triple this. On Dex tools or something, I'm sure there's tens of thousands. Yeah. But. So combined market cap of like 50 billion at the moment. I mean, that might be different tomorrow as we all know, right? Um, do you really think we need that many projects and because it's a bit of a suggestive question. Mm -hmm. And what kind of projects do you think actually we need that really bring value to it? Yeah, I think, you know, agentic freedom and compute for all. If you're a dev and you want to be a part of uh, this that's happening, the tools are available, they work, and uh, it's all permissionless. So do we, need, do we need all these projects? I'm sure there's going to be consolidation like we saw over the last decade in blockchain and crypto into certain niches and in certain marketplaces. Um, there's definitely, com you know, competition drives innovation. Uh, so people, um, kind of scratching right at the top, um, to be seen is important. Um, will they all survive? Absolutely not. Well, I think, you know, it's probably many of them are applications. And if there are applications uh, or agents that are, monitored, are managed by DAOs and controlled by tokens, so we're going to see a lot more. Um, I think on the infrastructure side, um, yeah, like I think consolidation probably will happen. But if there are, um, you know, the interesting about AI is if we think further that AI will buy these, acquire these tokens themselves and he's going to spend or he or she is going to spend these tokens um, to sustain themselves and to use it for exchange of, I don't know, anything like resources, data, compute across the world. You know, the beauty about AI is they can handle way more complexity than we human can. 
So yeah, we might have a lot more AI related tokens because they are just an API access to some kind of infrastructure or software, then the AI don't mind, you know, buying. And, and buying. I think to this complexity, it's like, you know, trading algorithms and hedge funds and AI driven hedge funds have been going on for a very long time. Um, but now we're starting to see like agentic uh, liquidity and market making projects. Um, there's an offshoot Eliza Finance that has been uh, building LP pools across uh, the greater ecosystem. And we're seeing that, um, you know, again, these agents are going to need liquidity. If there's a token that's born on their name, uh, they can use that, but they're going to have to not dump the bag to pay their AWS bill, right? And hopefully, uh, you know, their ICP bill. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah, like, exactly, are, yeah. are humans buying their tokens so that they can survive? And are you building like a cult level mentality for people buying these and selling? So it's, there's a mentality that has to go into, or what is it for? Um, is the purpose to, you know, have this survive a calamity or, you know, the human that created it? And um, if so, make sure that it's set up on a, a strong decentralized cloud. All right. So, I mean, let, let's stick with Eliza for, for a moment. Like, you guys are building multi-chain, right? So your, your framework is deployed on one chain after the other, which is actually fantastic. So congrats to that. What's the game plan, the ultimate plan for, for Eliza? You want to be on every network? Yeah, so because it's a because it's a free open source um, framework, uh, people from those chains have come either from you know the Ethereum Foundation or ICP devs have come themselves. They clone the repo, they build the plugin, they you know submit it as a pull request, and then our main contributors they make sure it works. But there's also the the long tail of maintaining that. So you can't just, you know, come score a touchdown and then do a dance and walk off the field. You have to ensure that it's going to be maintained over time. And then that actually bears in mind for all these devs that are going to choose a chain to first deploy on. So the, the better documented something is, the more uh, of a process um, there is to the flow of that multi-chain. Um, it's, again, competition. Um, that's going to drive more volume to those chains. And our... We really just want more efficiency, more transparency and openness. And uh, me being here in, in, in my title, uh, making sure that um, you know governments as well have access to the software, know about having access to the software and know how to use it properly. Okay, cool. Then uh, again, coming back to a bit of the question I had in the beginning, like um, what's the most exciting use case that you would see being implemented by this year, so next year, if we meet here again, World Computer Day, what great story would we have to tell? Um, I think if you're just thinking about this year, I mean, just thinking about the year before until what it is today, I think it's so much has changed. And a lot of these things, like all these agents, you know, flourishing, like really, I don't think anybody can sit here and say they can, they, they, have, they can predict that. I mean, what we are seeing now, what a lot of people building are really for trading tools. Um, you know, a lot of automation on trading because DeFi is a horrible experience <laughs> and uh, nobody wants to manage all of that wallets and all of that, you know, bridging. So we're seeing a lot of effort being put into um, having uh, AI assisting um, intent, like what do you want to trade, what do you want to achieve, and, and, and analyzing trades and executing. Um, it's, I, most of it hasn't worked perfectly yet. I think we're seeing a lot of those coming out. Um, I think that's, I, I probably think that's a short term uh, product. Um, I think longer term probably gaming. I'm seeing a lot of uh, gaming uh, related agents, content related agents that are, has more uh, capability, more like multi-model, not just text. Um, I think having that um, proprietary content, text, and be able to generate a real-time uh, video, audio, um, and really enhance your engagement. And, uh, and then these agents are kind of have their own personality and, um, and you can own them. I think it's probably something we all had a thought we would have, um, but something we think maybe in 12 months time we can see some of the games starting to have those. You're absolutely right with the portfolio optimization because, I mean, me as a human, spending hours a day harvesting yield, clicking buttons, confirming transaction. It's just, it's getting really tiresome. And if I deploy an agent that I know and trust and I put it in a multi-sig with me and it just yields 
all day and you know I, I give it signing authority on those on those contracts um, that gives me time to spend with my family um, that I would rather be doing obviously uh, to your point with gaming um, you know I have, I have a history as a as a professional gamer I think um, you know gaming has had a long-standing uh, history with AI with bots you know you're fighting against computers and uh, having a better experience with an NPC that you can, um, you know, have a cognizant actual conversation, like build a, a friendship or a relationship with, that's going to change uh, experiential uh, gaming. That's forever. I mean, the, the moment where you actually feel like you're having a, a, a conversation, like the way people feel the way they're having with like character AI or some was one of these things. Um, I think influencers are already a thing as well now uh you know these kind of this cult following and then that kind of begates too where you're they're tokenizing that influencer who can then pay their tour bills you know buy a tour bus for the humans and then do a stage like miku or or something or in the other yeah but these are all i think quite short-term foreseeable products i think we can see them coming in the next 12 months yeah. i think some like really cool stuff is like what um, I, I know, like AI can code. I think as a, a, a non-programmer, I would yeah. love to have, uh, you know, the ability to express my creativity, right? To build products and just dictating AI and they can build products for me. And can I, I do another poll? How many devs in the room? Yeah, how many people, uh, keep your hand up if you use cursor. Yeah, so cursor is magic. This is, I am a lifetime developer, coder. I would spend hours fixing bugs and errors in the console. And now you're just like, fix this. And it's done. And like AI that can code, I, I now as like um, an entrepreneur, someone who can like vision a product, you can take a screenshot of a, a drawing on a bar napkin and it'll build you UI. This is, you know, I, I don't work for Cursor. I'm not, I'm not a shareholder, but uh, I, I use it every day. I think that this is, is where we're getting to the point where um, AI is creating um, superhumans. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, maybe just start with the, with the development part, with the, with the coding part. I think the exciting thing that Dom presented is it's not only like fixes the code, it actually deploys the code, right? And in one go. Uh, and I think yeah, exactly, that's, that's exactly. Like, I don't want to be like buying the, the domain and deploying it and like, you know, trying to figure out which like, you know, like cloud service I should be using. Like, I don't want any of that complexity yeah. or maintaining it or debugging it or you worry about the security. I think if what, you know, done presented can really come true, like, I, I just think it's just opened up so many possibilities and um, like allow us to you know be creators and create yeah. software that's really uh... no absolutely but in particular you know it, it finally blurs the line between web 2 and web 3 so we don't have this you know separation which i think anyway is the goal that at the end of the day no one cares if it's web 3 or web 2 it's actually web it's a new standard of web right i mean on the gaming part i'm, I'm actually curious because most of the things i would assume is going to be more centralized right i mean by the way, I'm looking forward to the next iteration of Skyrim with some proper NPCs. Yeah, for those that don't know, Skyrim is the game with the most hilarious dumb NPCs. <laughs> so if we can get an iteration with AI NPCs, that would be cool. Um, on on your AI wealth management part, I think uh, that's for sure something we, we can already see. Like, I mean, there are many teams working on this, right? And also we're looking forward to uh, hopefully this year have a agent integrated in OISI in the new wallet that just launched that will help you with your wealth management activities. Mm -hmm. Um, time is up. Um, yeah, time is up. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much for, for, uh, listening in. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. I Thanks for the questions. It was great. Super insightful and, um, enjoy the, the rest of the program. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Thanks.